day one of the 2023 NFL draft is over, and the the only thing I can say is, what in the world? What happened? I mean, nobody's mocks was right. You have Will Levis not even going in the first round, Anthony Richardson going fourth. I think a lot of us thought that that was going to happen, but I learned so much today. I learned one Beyond a shadow of a doubt, the mock drafts are purely for entertainment. And two, I believe that the combine does impact how these players are viewed. Jalen Carter was not the pick. Now, I don't want to like, I'm not, you know, gloating or anything like that. But when you put your opinion on the internet, people are quick to ridicule it. And so when I have a moment in the sun, I like to take my lap around it. Because, you know, I y'all judge my opinion, but... I'm not entitled to have one. You know what I'm saying? So, first of all, let's address the fact that, okay, it's so much to take in. I'm going to try to keep this video under 10 minutes. The Detroit Lions have the sixth pick. The Houston Texans made a straight dog move. I mean, they had the second pick. They took C.J. Stroud. We all knew they, were go- they weren't going to roll with Davis Mills. They have the 12th pick. They come back up, and they take at number three, Will Anderson Jr. Completely broke my heart. Now, At that moment, the Detroit Lions, not at that moment, but later on when we got to pick six, they did what we thought they were going to do, which is if Will Anderson wasn't there, they were maybe going to take – the first thing I said was they were going to trade out or take B. John Robinson. But what I did know is that Jalen Carter was not going to be the pick, so give me my flowers, put them in the comment section, put the flower emoji in the comment section. I would really appreciate that. Remember, I said that – uh, I did say that they would take Bijan, if but but I had him coming later. So I did say Will Anderson and Bijan were their picks. Now they passed on Will Anderson. Now the Detroit Lions, who then at number twelve trade with the Arizona Cardinals. So the Arizona Cardinals come up to six. We take twelve. The Cardinals get our third round pick, and the Detroit Lions get pick twelve, pick thirty four, and pick one fifty eight, I believe. So now. The Detroit Lions have, they have three seconds. We have no third. We gave our third. We gave 81 away to the Arizona Cardinals, right? Yes, <laughs> it's been a long night. Then at number 12, they surprised the entire world with Bijan Robinson off the board. We take Jameer Gibbs. This is going to be an outstanding pick. I know a lot of y'all are upset. A lot of y'all are screaming SOL. A lot of y'all are screaming that this is a L of a draft. And I'm going to say that you are crazy. This guy is going to be able to do something we haven't seen since Javit Bess. I want you to mark that on your calendar. I want you to put that, take that quote. This guy is going to give us the explosive plays that we lack, okay? So that the first third of the draft was just ridiculous. It was it was the most insane thing I've ever seen. So now the Detroit Lions, they stick at 18. At 18, we take the only linebacker, if I'm not mistaken, to actually have the linebacker classification at Jack Campbell. Now I think Jack Campbell's lateral movement is slow, but Brad Holmes again, after taking a running back in the <laughs> at number 12 takes a linebacker at number 18, something he never does. This is the highest rated linebacker, meaning the highest drafted linebacker he's ever had. Now, I had his pre- I saw his press conference, and he didn't give a fart about what anybody thought about his picks. So y'all have to make a decision. I've made my decision. You have to decide whether or not you're going to trust Brad Holmes or you're not going to trust him. I've, you know, there was a, frame, a, a quote from the 1989 Batman movie where the Joker says to Batman, I've taken off my mask. Let's see if you can take off yours. I think it's kind of funny how y'all completely annihilated me for the Jamison Williams pick last year. Let me tell you the difference between Jamison Williams. Speaking of Jamison Williams, you know the brother's sick, right? He got his teammate that he can't play with for the next for the first six games of the season. So if Jamo is going to straighten up, it's going to be now, right? But what is the difference between last year and this year? Last year... We lost, we gave up capital to get Jamison Williams when our defense was lacking. This year, we gained capital capital, and, and took Jameer Gibbs, who is the second best running back in the 
draft. Bijan got the speed uh, in between the tackles. Jameer has the speed. Trust me, this guy is going to do something that you haven't seen in over 10 years. Maybe since the Rezi, Reggie Bush arc, somewhere around there. Somewhere between J- Javid Best and Reggie Bush. Like, he's going to do that, okay? Now, this is coming from the guy who acts, absolutely popped the gasket with J- Jamison Williams' pick, okay? So, you got to make a decision, okay? I want you to put also in the comments below, after you give me my flowers, is, is do you trust Brad Holmes? Why for yes and for no? You like that? Why for yes and for no? Just... <laughs> do you trust Brad Holmes? It's very simple. You either do or you don't. And this is coming from a guy, well, you see my, my catalog. I trust him. I like what he did. I'm surprised. I'm surprised. And you know what the funny part is? I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued about what the rest of this draft is going to hold. Now, let's talk, about, let's talk about DeAndre Swift. I figured if we took one of these two backs, DeAndre Swift was gone. Brad Holmes said in his press conference today, as we take a look at Jack Campbell here, he said in his press conference today that it didn't move the the needle on DeAndre Swift. The drafting of Jameer Gibbs did not move the needle on DeAndre Swift. That they are going to keep right now. He said everything he was supposed to, to say. Right now, Swift is on our roster. Right now, Swift is under contract. Blah, 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 right? He said the same thing. Oh, Jeff Okuda is essentially a rookie. He gone, okay? <laughs> DeAndre Swift is not safe, okay? And I truly believe that we could see a trade on day two or day three, especially now seeing that we have no third and no fourth. Brad Holmes is going to try to make that up. Now, again, quarterbacks that are on the board going into day two, Hendon Hooker did not come out in the first round. Will Levis still on the board. And all the ones that are rated after them. Brad Holmes has quite the impact to make in the second round. Again, we have picks 34 from the trade. We have pick 48 and 55. So our picks come in 21 picks. And then the rest of it is going to be a long day three or day two unless he trades up. But we could get a quarterback in the second round. Okay, needs of the team. We still could use a defensive end. Uh, the guy from Northwestern still on the board, still on the board. He would be a dog, man. We could get a wide receiver as well, Jalen Hyatt. Tomorrow, what could what could we do? I don't know. We take that we need a defensive tackle as well, but maybe you know what Brad Holmes didn't do. He did not address the defensive line. So either a he has faith in it, like some of y'all have been saying in the comment section. Or B, he has a plan tomorrow at 34. What could that be? We have the third pick in the second round. Okay? So, Osiris Torrance is still on the board if you wanted an offensive lineman. So, we tomorrow is going to be a unique day. Quarterback, is it going to be Jalen Hyatt? Well, tomorrow we walk away with a defensive end, a quarterback, and a wide receiver. Okay? So, put your thoughts in the comments below about who the Lions are going to take. I'm just going to throw it out there. Defensive end, possibly the dude from Northwestern, whose name I'm not going to try to butcher at 1 o'clock in the morning. Jalen Hyatt could be knowing that the Detroit Lions don't have a second-round pick. Maybe the they take AA from Northwestern, Jalen Hyatt from Tennessee, maybe Hendon Hooker, who needs to sit. They said his knee is doing pretty well. Maybe, maybe a Will Levis. I mean, I don't know. We, we got our running back. Or could we take a cornerback? But we stacked up on cornerback. So after tomorrow, we don't pick it again until day three. And we're talking about the, the end of day two and the beginning of day three, we don't pick. So an impact will be made tomorrow. So I'm just going to throw it out there. We're going to get a quarterback, possibly. We're going to get a defensive end, possibly. And we're going to get a... Whoever it was, no tight end that we said, right? We didn't get a tight end. Uh, I think, I believe Mayor still is on the, on the board. I, I'm not sure. What did I say? So I, it's late. I said uh, defensive end, quarterback, and whoever I said. I got to watch this back. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What would you grade this draft 
I know a lot of y'all are mad, but like y'all was telling me last year, you tripping, okay? Y'all tripping. Let Brad Holmes do his thing. Trust the process. Let's see. I, I promise you this. Jameer Gibbs, if he is not injured before the draft, I mean, before we get to the field, this guy is going to give you something you haven't seen since Javit Best, Reggie Bush. That's been over 10 years. Trust the process. And this is coming from me. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself and each other. Shout out to the late Jerry Springer. And as always, go Lions.